India to raise target of restoring degraded land to 26 million hectares by 2030, says Prime Minister Narendra Modi. Citizenship Amendment Bill will not affect rights of indigenous people of Norte, says Home Minister and BJP President Amit Shah. President Ramnath Kovin reaches Iceland in his first leg of his three-nation tour to hold talks with Icelandic President. Central government reiterates its commitment to achieve five trillion dollar economy by 2024. Four member delegation from newly created Union Territory of Radak in Meghalaya to study about rights provided to tribals under sixth schedule. Good evening, viewers, and a warm welcome to Northeast News. I'm Changamla Thumra, and now the details. Prime Minister Narendra Modi said that India will raise target of restoring land with degraded status from 21 million hectares to 26 million by 2030. The Prime Minister said this while addressing the 14th Conference of Parties of the UN Convention to combat de desertification in Greater Noida in Uttar Pradesh today. The Prime Minister said that desertification affects over two-thirds of the countries of the world. He said along with addressing the degraded lands, we also need to address water scarcity. Going forward, India would be happy to propose initiatives for greater South-South cooperation in addressing issue of climate change, biodiversity and land degradation. When we address degraded lands, we also address water scarcity. Union Home Minister and BJP President Amit Shah has made it clear that a citizen amendment bill would not affect the rights of the indigenous people of the Northeast. Addressing the fourth conclave of the Northeast Democratic Alliance, NEDA, in Guwahati today, Shah said that NEDA was set up to take NDA to the grassroots level. Shah said that effective steps will be taken to prevent human trafficking as well as smuggling of arms and drugs in border areas of Northeast. He also stressed that all Northeastern states should come together to jointly promote tourism in the region. Addressing the conclave, Union Minister for Northeast, Dr. Chitendra Singh, hoped that the Northeast would be the most visible part of India. Assam Chief Minister Sarbanand Sonowal said that the Northeast Democratic Alliance has united the Northeast region. Under Narendra Modi, the entire Northeast is making tremendous progress, he said. Earlier, the Union Home Minister Amit Shah today visited Kamakya Temple in Guwahati and offered prayers. During his visit, Shah was accompanied by State Chief Minister Sarbananda Sonowal and Finance Minister Himanta Biswa Sharma, among others. Excuse me, sir. 
The two-day plenary session of the Northeastern Council, which was inaugurated by Union Home Minister Amit Shah yesterday in Guwahati, today held a chief secretary-level meeting to discuss various issues for sustainable development of the region. The meeting discussed mostly about development of agriculture and welfare of farmers, food processing industries, school education and other development aspects. Several, several senior officials of the Northeastern states and central ministries took part in the discussion. Uh, we have lots of volunteer improvements in education. Then you will see that we are ranked uh, 22, which is not very really President Ramnath Kovin reached Iceland today as part of his three-nation tour. During his stay in the Nordic island nation, the president will hold bilateral meeting with Icelandic president where memorandums will be signed to further the cooperation between the two countries. The president will also deliver a lecture at the University of Iceland with a focus on environmental issues. He will be meeting a business delegation and interact with the Indian community as part of the tour. The National Democratic Alliance government under the leadership of Prime Minister Narendra Modi has taken many historic and path-breaking initiatives in the first 100 days of its second term. Several union ministers are presenting report cards on 100 days of the government by holding media interactions in different cities across the country starting today. The central government has today reiterated that it is committed to achieve a $5 trillion economy by 2024 and more credit will be made available for corporates, retail borrowers, MSMEs and small traders in the coming days. Addressing a press conference in Hyderabad today, union minister for Power, Renewable Energy and Skill Development, R.K. Singh said 70,000 crore rupees will be released to public sector banks to facilitate them to lend more loans to the needy. He said a plethora of initiatives were taken in several fields to make the economy stronger and surge ahead to achieve the target of $5 trillion economy. Chandrayaan-2 Vikram lander is in a single piece, however, it's in a tilted position, an ISRO official associated with the mission has said. It had a hard landing very close to the plant touchdown site as per the images sent by orbiter's camera, the official added. ISRO is making all-out efforts to see whether communication can be re-established, the official further said. The government today announced the rollout of other enabled payment system services by India Post Payments Bank IPPB. Minister for Communications, Electronics and Information Technology Ravi Shankar Prasad said this gives a strong boost to the center's efforts in expanding access to financial services for millions of unbanked and underbanked customers. He was speaking at the first anniversary celebrations of India Post Payments Bank in New Delhi. With today's launch, IPPB has become the single largest platform in the country for providing interoperability interoperable banking services to customers of any bank by leveraging the last mile unprecedented reach of the postal network. Referring to 440 central schemes on border to the DBT platform, he said all these schemes must ride on IPPB platform too. A four-member delegation from the newly carved Union Territory of Ladakh is on a four-day visit to Shillong to study about the various rights provided to the tribals of Meghalaya under the sixth schedule of the Indian Constitution. The team arrived in Shillong on Thursday and during their stay in Meghalaya, they have met many leaders and experts including various political leaders. 98% of the people in Ladakh are tribals. Ladakh was recently declared Union Territory and the purpose of the visit was to study the Constitution of India and the sixth schedule that protects and safeguards the tribals in the six scheduled areas of the region. In Manipur, the Cine Actors Guild will organize a two-day discourse on Manipur cinema, its present scenario and measures for development on September 14 and 15 at Tribal Research Institute in Chingmeirong. In a press meet held at Manipur Press Club in Imphal, convener of Cine Actors Guild, KSH Tej Kishore said that in the two-day disclosure, this course, all constituent members of Film Forum Manipur and other organizations which are actively involved in different activities for the progress and prosperity of Manipuri cinema are being invited to present papers on a given topic. 
In Manipur, the third graduation day celebration for 2014 batch of Dental College Regional Institute of Medical Sciences, RIMS, IMFAL, was held at Jubilee Hall, RIMS, on Saturday. Delivering his speech, Minister of Health L. Jento Kumar Singh congratulated all the 29 doctors that graduated and advised them to carry out their services with a human touch and sincerity. He said that from birth till death, people are always concerned of their physical well-being. Keeping that in view, the state government is conducting free health camp, free diagnostics, health scheme, etc. He said that the state government will fill up all vacant medical posts in the state soon. In sports news, in Meghalaya, the 15th senior state swimming competition was organized by the Meghalaya Swimming Association in collaboration with the Directorate of Sports and Youth Affairs at Crinolin Swimming Pool in Shillong. Addressing the gathering on the concluding day, Chief Minister Konrad Sangma said that the government has initiated measures to improve sports infrastructure in the state. Acknowledging the talent of young swimmers, the Chief Minister said that measures are being taken to improve sports facilities in the state. The Chief Minister also informed that the prize money awarded by the state to sports persons winning gold at national championships has been increased to 2 lakh rupees from the earlier 7,000 rupees. Manipur Hills Journalist Union MHJU celebrated its 36th Foundation Day during a function held at Manipur Press Club in Imphal on Saturday. Addressing the function, Member of Parliament Lorho Fuse stated that journalists play a huge role in fostering trust among different communities and ensuring communal harmony. Despite the challenges in information sector in the hills due to its geographical terrain, the journalists have been playing a huge role in informing the public about events and occasions, he said. He also lauded the media personnel for their dedicated services. The union also observed a two minutes silence and expressed condolences to the departed members on the occasion. The meet was attended by journalists of the hill districts of the state. And finally, before we wind up, a recap of the headlines. India to raise target of restoring degraded land to 26 million hectares by 2030, says Prime Minister Narendra Modi. Citizenship Amendment Bill will not affect rights of indigenous people of Naughty, says Home Minister and BJP President Amit Shah. President Ramnath Kovin reaches Iceland in first leg of his three-nation tour to hold talks with Icelandic President. Central government reiterates its commitment to achieve $5 trillion economy by 2024. And a four-member delegation from newly created Union Territory of Ladakh in Meghalaya to study about rights provided to tribals under sixth schedule. That brings us to the end of this evening's bulletin. Thank you for tuning in. Namaskar.